Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. I am Big Bad Kaiju, and welcome to the Digital Diversity here on the Monster Mash. And it's Ace Week. It's Asexual Awareness Week. Um, this is the A out of LGBTQIA+. And these are, as always, uh, things worth celebrating, things worth being aware of and talking about and exploring and getting to have in our media. Um, and that's what we're here for. That is what Digital Diversity Project is here for. Uh, we are here to play games and look at games and talk about games that are made by members of the queer community. And because it's Ace Week, we're going to do some Ace stuff. So, today we have on our plate, um, we have the demo of Camp Raven Rock, um, which looks really cute and fun and amazing. And we have a game uh, by a returning developer, Grizzlian or Allison. Um, whoop! My alert turned up. What's going on here? Hey, Torres! 12 month subscriber, you're amazing. How you doing? Um, hey, Traz! Um, and we are going to be playing a game called Who Knows? Brackets, where they are, by Drizillion. Um, and if we've got time, we're going to poke around in the Ace Jam from last year and see what sort of things people were making for the Ace Jam. So, without further ado, I guess we better get started and check out what's going on. So, let's launch a game. This one has music, which is always good. Uh, where's my agent? There we go. I now have like five game launches. This is the point we're up to right now. I don't mind. I don't mind. Epic is doing really good work. Um, let's go to Camp Ravenrock. We'll start with this one today. Let's bring up a game link. Wow, that's loud for me. And we'll switch over to the game. There we go. Camp Raven Rock. Uh, this one looks really cool. Let me just check to make sure there are no content warnings for this one. Ba 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 ba. There is talk of sexual orientation and attraction, as well as some swearing, talk of trauma and bad family issues, and mildly suggestive content. Content warnings are important, folks. Always make sure you put your content warnings in there. So, how's that volume? Too loud? Too quiet? We'll figure it out as we go. So, let's have a look. Uh, we have ourselves a Renpai game. Immediately apparent from the design. This is awesome. I know how to play around with this. And today, we have a little co-host. We have little Carmilla back here, who is, who is, who is so adorable and so cute. And this tiny little fur baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Being a cutie butt. Aww. She is a, she is a baby. She's a year old, but she's still a baby. All right, let's do this thing. But I love these character designs. They're adorable. All right, let's start a game. My name is, my name is, my name is Slim Shady. No, wait, that's not right. Kaiju. <laughs> yeah, okay, that was a little too easy, that joke. Um, one morning in late May, I received the envelope in the mail that I'd been waiting for all year. It was a fat package, which boded well, so I ripped into it immediately. Yes, I got into the Raven Rock summer session. Why would I be so excited about spending my summer at some school-related program? No, I'm not a massive nerd. It's just that Raven Rock isn't a normal school. It's And its summer session isn't about academics. Let's see, we might move me over this side this time around. Up. 
Why? Because we can. So you can at least see the start of what's going on here, if not all of it. There we go. Raven Rock Academy is a major hub in the secret community I'd been hearing about from my parents for years, but never was allowed to actually participate in until now. What kind of community, you ask? We call it the non-community, short for non-human. Well, most of us aren't exactly non-human, just not entirely human. Mood. I have a very... Oh, my, my very gay cup matches the colour scheme of the text box. This, this bodes well. And Raven Rock is a school where we can develop our non-human abilities and connect with the larger community on Earth and off-world, even off-universe. Off-universe? I'm liking this idea. I'm what's generally called a partial. The most common type of non on Earth, somewhere in my family history, were some non-humans, so I've inherited some of their powers. My powers allowed me to... What? There we go. Oh, you can switch full screen. No, let's go with that one. Yeah. My powers allowed me to... Ooh. Move objects with my mind. Teleport. Turn invisible. Fly. Or shapeshift. This is going to be a hard choice, because I like all of these. Like, these are all pretty good things. What do we pick? Like, I'm usually, I'm usually in the shapeshifter camp. Because there's something fundamentally queer about that, and I love it. Um, turn invisible could be useful. Flying could be interesting, but we'd get shot down by someone who thought we were a drone, probably. Oh, you played this before, Draz? How is it? How is it? Tell me. Move objects with my telekinesis is good. Teleporting is fun. Like, what did you take? What did you take when you played it? Like... I'm tempted to go the amethyst path and, and go shapeshifting. This is This is like the most bisexual colour scheme I've ever seen and I love it. Um I think we need to shapeshift. Yeah, let's go shapeshift. You played two years ago. I've never been allowed to use my powers in the open before, so this will be the first time for me and I can't wait. And from what I hear, the Raven Rock Summer Session is less like school and more like camp. Hey, Sorcery! How you doing? Welcome, welcome. I haven't seen you in ages. So, the demo for this, I believe, covers the first five days of camp. So, I am curious to see how long... Oh, how long those five days take. I'm just curious to see if that's just... Yeah, that's just one looping piece, but it's really cute. So... reason I'm very keen to be able to do some Ace Week stuff here is because I am demisexual. Uh, which does form fall along the Ace spectrum somewhere. Um, there are many, many, many variations. Um, like... We are all different. We all see the world differently. We all experience the world differently. And we all interact with others differently. Um, I fall into the kind of, there's no sexual attraction unless there is a serious um, emotional attraction, but that doesn't necess necessitate for a sexual attraction to ever actually occur. So I am in a poly relationship and I have one partner with whom I am extremely remote, romantically attached to, but is not sexual, and I have one who I am both, so it... But I love both, and we need more games that talk about this sort of stuff, and we need more games by people who are somewhere along the Ace spectrum, because they're pretty awesome. Ace or Aero? 
remember that. Uh, the A stands for both asexual and aromantic, um, and these are all awesomely valid wives. So yeah, about a month later. And a gender, of course, I missed that one. A is asexual and aromantic and agender, which was why you cannot leave the A off. Um, which is why I tend to go with the LGBTQIA because I find it's the most inclusive um, without resorting to a 14 mile long letter chain. I can't believe I'm actually here for a whole month. I love our character. Our character is adorable. Another camper! What's your name? Before I can answer the loud girl on the right, the other yells at her. Amy, will you please stop that? You're embarrassing me. These are both so adorable characters. I kind of want that choker. I figure they must be relatives of some sort. The girl in gothy clothes turns away from Amy and looks back at me. I'm sorry about my little sister. She's a bit hyper. We'll stop bothering you now. Hey, welcome! We try to be educational here. That's We want fun and we want education because edutainment is awesome. Says the person who grew up with far too many edu educational games. Uh, the girl turns to leave without telling me her name. Ask her name to keep her from leaving. Wait, don't leave yet. I didn't get your name. The girl turns back towards me and a small smile appears on her face. I go by Persephone Death. Yeah, haters gotta hate, but this is me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's, it's very much early 2000s in that feel. Criticize her name. Compliment her name. Say nothing about her name. I'm going to compliment her name. Because that's... It's a good name. Because... What was it? Wasn't Persephone the goddess of... Life or growth? Now I'm really curious. Someone, someone tell me. Someone tell me. Because I'm really curious. But I'm pretty sure those two names are contradictory. I don't care. I got a sleepy kitty back here. That makes me happy. I think it's so cool that you chose your own name. Thanks. It's nice to hear that for once. So I'm really curious, what kind of powers do you guys have? I'm assuming you're partials, right? You don't really look like off-worlders. Me, 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 me first. I'm a legit magical girl. I can shoot energy blasts out of my hands. Dece. Amy demonstrates by burning a hole in the grass next to me. Yeah, and she's really into anime. Anime and sugar. Fucking valid. I mean, if I got to be a magical girl, I'd be like, super into that whole lifestyle as well. I step a little to the left, distancing myself from the smoking hole. What about you, Persephone? What's your power? Persephone looks down at the ground and fidgets a bit in the spotlight. Well, I'm I'm a healer. What about you? What's your power? Oh, the goth girls are healer. I'm a shapeshifter. I can change to look like other people. That's pretty cool. Thanks for talking, but I gotta go now. I have to make sure my sister makes it to her room without blowing anything up. Bye! The two girls turn and enter a building to the right. I look down at the sheaf of papers from my admission package till I find the page that tells me where my room is. A helpful map tells me I need to empty the building in front of me and head down the north hall. There's no key included in the package, which makes me pause, but I figure they'll probably have some kind of someone handing them out near the rooms. As I get close to the building, I see there's a check-in table with two girls sitting at it. As I approach, they get up and smile at me. I love the character design, it's really pretty. The girl on the left speaks first. Hi, I'm Eileen. The other girl come, 
complete Silene sentence. And I'm Jay. And we're two of your summer session counselors for the next month. Nice to meet you. So I sign in here? Nah, not necessary. We're pretty high tech here. The higher ups knew as soon as you got here. We're just here to answer questions. So I guess I've got a question. I didn't get a key for my room and my packet. Do you have those? Hey, you heard Jay. We're high tech here. Even the doors are smarter than us. Fair enough. Just put your hand on the doorknob and we'll know to let you in. Is there anything else you need to know? I don't think so. The packet has my schedule, a map, and my room number. So I guess I'll see you later then. I hope you have an awesome first day, Kaiju. Oh, Wait, did I tell her my name? I don't think I did. She also seems to be glowing slightly. Thanks, I guess I'll be going now. I turn and walk into the building. I follow my map down the hallways to the North Hall and find room 113. It looks pretty normal door, but as soon as I put my hand on the doorknob, I feel something strange and hear a click. I turn the doorknob and enter the room. What the fuck? I thought this was a bedroom. Hey, Rumi, this is our bedroom. I'm just messing with the holograms. My name is Kimri, by the way. I like you, Kimri. <laughs> and I like that the bedroom has a is a hollow suite. Our room has holograms. Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't it? Oh, you're an earthy. I forget that you're so behind us in tech. Wow, I'm not sure if I like them anymore. So you're an off-worlder? Kandalingan. Kandalingan, to be exact. Kandalinga is on the moon, right? Ancient Atlantean descendants and all that. Living underground. That's right. I think I've read that book before. It sounds very Golden Age science fiction. All of a sudden, I feel really awkward. Even though I've heard of the Kandalingans, I feel the culture shock creeping in. Mm. Let's admit our culture shock. I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed by all these new things. Would you mind turning the holograms off? Oh, sure thing. <laughs> Kimri waves her hand and the room goes from being a jungle to a normal looking dorm room. That should do it. Oh, I forgot to tell you my name. I'm Kaiju. Sorry for that. No problem. Nice to meet you. Just then I hear a click and the door opens. Another girl comes through the room with her luggage. Must be my other roommate. Three people in one room? Gosh. You guys must be my roommates. I'm Lizzie. What are your names? I'm Kim Ree. Great to meet you. I'm Kaiju. Nice to meet you, Lizzie. The last available bed is the nook over there. So I guess that's where you can dump your stuff? Dang, if I'd gotten here earlier, I could have had the window bed, but whatever. I'm still psyched to be here. It's the kind of thing I only used to dream about. See, I'm the only one in my immediate family that ended up with gnome powers. Freaked my family out, of, my parents out a bit. I let out a sigh. At least I wasn't the only one here still fairly new to the non community. Kim Ree was nice and all, but she was a bit intimidating. Four people in room. Oh god, four in one room. I mean, what is it? I've had, I've lived in a six person room, which was horrible. And I've lived in a 66 person room, which we don't talk about. But like more than two is too much in my opinion. I'm electric, see? And before I got a handle on it, I used to fry electronics. Hope you didn't mind or didn't bring laptops with you. Just kidding. I've got control over that. Most of the time. This this person belongs in IT, apparently. I hope this isn't rude in the non world, but I'm really curious what you guys can do. Oh, I'm a mind reader. <laughs> Look at your faces. What sort of dirty thoughts do you guys have in there? <laughs> it's just messing with you. Actually, I control temperature. I can freeze things and set stuff on fire. Why couldn't we get that power? 
That sounds like so much fun. I don't know what you're talking about. No dirty, dirty thoughts here. I'm actually aromantic and asexual, so that's not really my thing. But I don't know about kaiju. Fucking straight off the bat, love it. We're six characters in and like ten minutes in and we're already getting to like the representation part. So that's making me very happy. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually, I actually am into girls, but don't worry, I'm not a creep. <laughs> That's one way to say it. You might have guessed already, but so am I. I hope you don't think I'm creepy, though. I just want to make friends here. It's very cute. Isn't it funny how not a single one of us is straight? It's almost like the administration did it on purpose. Or, like... Possibly just because a lot of <laughs> queer people got powers. I don't know. Oh my god, do powers relate to being queer in this world? Does that mean the cishets the powerless ones? Curious or curiouser? So what about you? What kind of awesome powers are you rocking? Oh, I'm a shapeshifter, not a werewolf. Let's get that straight. I can make myself look like other people. That's awesome! Wish I could do that. <laughs> Definitely cooler than my power. I'm Jelly. Looks like Kimri picked up her earthy slang off the internet. Kimri seems to already have unpacked most of her things. A lot of things. Lizzie, on the other hand, hasn't had a chance to unpack anything, and neither have I. There's still some time before I have to head down to the auditorium for the opening of camp. Time for small talk or something. Um... Ooh, talk to Kimmery about her stuff. Help Lizzie unpack or show off your powers. I mean, I kind of want to see how well we can do with our shape shifting. That's a thing. Mm. Talk to Kimmery about her stuff. We can find more, find out more about the tech. That'd be interesting. Ooh. Ooh, choices, choices. I am an indecisive person. Um, let's show off our powers. Let's. Hey, what is this? I cool. I concentrate on Kimri and shift my appearance to look like her, pink hair and all. <laughs> my red pie like scripting brain is just gone. Show Kimri left. <laughs> With dissolve. I can hold it for a few minutes, but I don't let it go that long. Kimberly laughs at the juvenile stunt, but obviously isn't that impressed. On the other hand, Lizzie's eyes are wide. It's obviously she hasn't been exposed to this kind of thing before. After finishing unpacking, it's time to finally go to the auditorium. I don't know where the auditorium is, but I can see hundreds of students all heading to the same direction. It's probably a good idea to follow them. We follow them through glassed-in hallway from our dorm into the main school, take a few turns and finally funneled into the auditorium. Oh wow, I wasn't expecting that! Placeholder art? Probably? The auditorium, actually known as the Atrium, is shaped like an octagon with descending rows of seating around the walls leading down to a central stage. Probably turn that up a little bit. Almost like a strange sort of coliseum without the lion fights. A ramp leads down to the stage, making each row easily accessible. Above everything thing is what appears to be a stained glass ceiling and abstract patterns of galaxies. Floating near the ceiling is a hologram of the solar system with portions of planets and moons lit up where there is non-presence. It's breathtaking. It's incredible. Look at this. Ten points for placeholder art though. I am a big fan of just like people just trying for placeholder art. On the central stage sit a group of teachers and summer sessions counselors, including the ones I briefly met earlier. Some of them are glowing this time, I'm sure. 
In the very center of the stage, the light-skinned middle-aged woman in short black hair. She has a commanding aura, totally sure of herself and somewhat intimidating, even from a distance. As if we finally, as we finally find seats among the sea of students, she begins to speak. Good evening, all, and welcome to Raven Rock Academy Summer Session. Her voice is clear and amplified throughout the whole room, and it gets everyone's attention in the atrium hushes. I am Dr. Arita Flavia Black, or as you will call me, Professor Black. I am in charge of the summer session here at Raven Rock, and I will also be one of your teachers, depending on which classes you choose to attend. I would like to welcome back those of you who attended in the past and greet those who are new to the program. I know that some of you are here for first introduction to the world as it really is and that some of the things you've seen so far may be frightening and confusing. Well, the real world is frightening and confusing, so, so far we're doing pretty good. But don't worry, you're here because you belong in our community, and we would like to welcome you with open arms. You're at the perfect ages to have your worlds turned upside down, and I assure you that the culture shock will fade. I am sure that within a few days you will feel more at home. As you may have figured out from your packets, nothing at summer sessions aside from this greeting and the final farewell are mandatory. You may choose which classes to attend and whether to attend. We recognize there is a lot to be learned here at Raven Rock, even outside of classes. Our summer session classes are grouped into four main categories, Ability Instruction and Management, Technological Education, Intercultural Studies, and Waywalking. I can figure out what three of those types of classes are. Waywalking? A sort of non-sport? I guess I'll find out later. I will be the head teacher for Ability Instruction and Management. I've devoted my life to teaching students here at Raven Rock to bring out and control the diverse range of abilities found in our community. No matter how obscure or unusual talents are, we'll help you develop them. Your head teacher for, te yeah, for technological education will be Vaughn Erstwhile. That's a good name. I like that. He has the equivalent of decades of experience with technologies of the moon and outer system. Professor Black gestures to a tall, skinny, olive-skinned man with blue hair seated next to her. He looks pretty young. What does she mean by the equivalent of decades? Dog years? I'm gonna guess dog years. The man gives a hearty wave to the audience. Your head teacher for intercultural studies will be Professor Liliandra Aras. Another good name. I understand that she likes to be referred to by her first name. She has a wealth of knowledge on the cultures of our various nations as they travel wildly throughout the system and the others. Professor Black gestures to a light-skinned woman with soft pink hair wearing a long flowing dress. She has a flower in her hair. And last, but certainly not least, your head teacher for way walking will be Ort of the Sand Scene. They are the most prolific waywalker that I've known, even for a nomad. Beware that Ort uses they them pronouns. Um, am I an Oret now? Let's I'm actually curious. Let's go check out the Oret. I want to do waywalking. Professor Black gestures to a dark skinned person with curly brown hair and unfamiliar clothing. They have strange boxy ears. After introducing the teachers, Professor Black introduces the counselors. I see Eileen and Jay again, as well as two boys holding hands that I recognize from the hallway. Their names are Jason, a boy with shoulder length black hair, and Ryan, a boy with light blonde hair as he flips up out of his eyes. After the counselors are introduced, Professor Black brings up a holographic projection that obscure the center stage, giving a 3D presentation of the footage captured of the previous year's summer session. Apparently, there's a battle of bands halfway through the 30 days and a dance at the end of the session. <gasps> Do we get to partake in Battle of the Bands? Hell yeah, queer Battle of the Bands. I'm all in for this. With a wave of her hands, Professor Black dismisses the holograms and says a final few words. We hope all of you get something out of your time here at Raven Rock. We know that for some of you, this is your only chance during the year to truly be yourself. I suggest that you make the most of it. As the students begin to stream out of the atrium, my stomach rumbles. I haven't eaten anything since a packet of peanuts on my flight out of California. It's definitely time for dinner. I follow the hungry crowds through the school, across the courtyard, and into a dining hall, which is airy and well lit, with the glass windows opening up to the courtyard. 
Kimri separates from our group when she when she sees the line of Kanding <sighs> Kandalingan. God, that's gonna trip me up so much today. Please forgive for the Kandalingan mess ups, because I'm gonna mess that one up a lot. But Lizzie stays in line with me for something a little more familiar. There's some time to try new things, but I think I've had enough newness for one day. Lizzie gets a large salad and I pile my plate high with pizza and a hamburger. My kind of food. As we walk back towards the table, something excitedly someone excitedly calls to Lizzie and sweeps away before I can say anything. Suddenly I'm alone with my food. Looking around cautiously, I see that most of the table's already full. When I spot a table with only two people at it and walk over. As I sit down, the two people look up at me and smile. I'm Kaiju. Hi, I'm Boo. You're an Earthy, aren't you? Guess I'm the only normal one here. Hey, what do you mean by that? The girl looks over at me. Sorry about that. I'm Meha. I'm from Atlanta. Boo here doesn't seem to understand Earthy manners yet. Uh, I apologize. This is my first time visiting Earth, and I'm a bit... How do I word this politely? Experiencing a bit of culture shock? Don't worry, buddy. You're, you're not alone. Yeah, best put it that way. Earth may be primitive to you, but it's our home. I don't mean to be rude either, but I'm totally new to everything here. So, Boo, would you mind telling me where you're from? Oh, you can't tell? I'm from Ree Song. It's on the moon. But it's not part of the of Candelinga. The Candelingan Empire is huge, but they don't control everything. There's a lot of story going on there, I can tell. It's still so weird to me thinking how their entire country's on the moon. That's awesome, anyway. What kind of powers do you guys have? I'm a shapeshifter myself. Cool, mine's a little more obscure, which is pretty common for a class B. I have super hearing. I can literally hear, like, anything within a mile of me. It's like sonar too, so I can pretty well so I can see pretty damn well without my eyes. God, that'd be rough to deal with. Can you imagine hearing everything within a mile? It's... Class B? I'm sure I've heard something about that before, but I can't remember where. I don't know if it would be rude to ask. And I'm class D1. Like many of you, what you call off-worlders. I can program inanimate objects with AE. That's soul energy, Earthies. Then I can make them do cool things. Primitive Earthy cultures consider people like us to be wizards. You can make golems. That's pretty fucking cool. Ooh, very good. Yeah? Yeah? Sorry. Kitten here, kitten here requires attention. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna have to set up a kitten cam. If she decides to make that a permanent space. Class D1. Now I better ask a question about this when I attend my first ability class. Better hope they don't catch you then, Boo. You won't want to be burned at the stake. But that doesn't happen anymore, does it? Of course not. They didn't burn people, they just throw them in prison. Then why'd you bring it up? To mess with you, silly. Man, I laugh. I like you too, and your powers sound cool too, but I think my food is getting cold. I need to take a break from talking to eat. After we quiet down a bit and focus mostly on our food, it turns out Boo and Mao have rooms in the totally different halls. We still think we'll see each other again. After finishing my food, I let out a long yawn. Jeez, getting up at 6am to catch my flight is really getting to me now. Tired? I would be too if traveling took me that long. But I thought you were from the moon. How did you get here faster than me? Oh, we came via doorway. One second I was in Resong and the next I was here. Wow. <laughs> sort of similar for me. My dad's a teleporter and he brought me here. But we still ended up arriving a little late. He's a bit scatterbrained. I managed to get here on time, but I may as well have been late. I still feel overwhelmed. It's totally normal. I remember when I first got the talk about non-world from my parents. They barely told me anything. It took me being here last year for everything to sink in. Yeah, but I've known that stuff existed for a long time, but this is my first time living it. 
You know your way back to your room? We could help you find it if you need help. I think I'm good. See you tomorrow. This game is so cute. I'm loving it. The character design is adorable, and the story is lovely. And the UI is very simple, but it's very clean and pretty. And that all for me works out to be a very good visual novel. Like, good story, good UI, good characters. I get up from the table and make my take my empty dishes up to the dish return. Then I head back to my dorm hall and find my room. Seems like several other students have the same idea, even though it's like 6.30. I open the door and see... Just Lizzie. No holograms. Sorry about dinner. My second cousin insisted that I sit her, at her table with all her friends. That's okay. I was fine. Kimri opens the door and jumps onto her bed. Kimri abandoned me too, and I still managed to find somewhere to sit. I didn't abandon you. I just didn't see where you went, and I sat outside with some old friends. Hope you had a chance to meet some new people. Yeah, I met a girl named Mao and a boy named Boo. Oh, I think we met Moha last year. She has a boyfriend then. I don't think know if he's back this year or if they were pretty attached to each other last year. So they weren't sitting together then. Hmm. Anyway, Kimri, I thought you'd stay out longer. It's only 6.30. I understand Lizzie coming back early. She probably had to fly here too. What about you? It was already late at night in my part of Candelinga when Camp Ravenrock started. I was already tired when I got here, but I was excited. So the adrenaline kept me awake. God. I'm just imagining what jet lag would be like with portal technology. So you're not you wouldn't be stuck on a plane. So you wouldn't be stuck in a transport where you don't really have control over anything. But just going from like middle of the night to middle of the day would be huge. Like your brain would not adjust to it very easily. Also, you know Twitch now tells me to set, give you people ad breaks? It's like, what the heck? No, I'm not putting ad breaks in this stuff. Sorry Twitch, I'm not making you any more money, because not like you help people. Um, hashtag just trying. <laughs> Until now, that is. Good night. Womp. Kimri pulls the covers over her head and is sleeping within minutes. I think I'm gonna follow Kimri's lead. Good night, Lizzie. I get into bed and close my eyes. It's been a long, exhausting, overstimulating day. But I'm super excited to learn even more and make new friends. Maybe even something else. Within a few minutes, I find myself drifting into sleep. I open my eyes and wipe the sleep from them as I pull back my covers and get out of bed. It seems that Lizzie and Kimri have already left. Maybe they went to take a shower or eat breakfast? I look at the clock I left on my side table. I slept a little bit, but not as much as I do late to class, which starts in about 20 minutes. Just enough time to get ready and get there. Now this music a little for me. I'm super excited to learn new things, but I could also skip class and just explore campus. Ooh, now we get to make that choice. So many choices, so many split paths. Uh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? I mean, I kind of want to check the way walking class because that sounds very different. And I want to check out what the teacher's like for that. Uh, yeah. Go way walking? Okay, let's try way walking. I decided to attend way walking class today. I still don't know what way walking is, so I can't wait to find out. Strangely, the location of the way walking class is in the middle of the main courtyard. Walled in on three sides by the main school building, the atrium, and a long zigzagging building. Maybe way walking is some kind of non-sport. Oh god, are we gonna do sports ball? 
I can see a bunch of students gathered, gathering together, sitting down on the grass or on the concrete pathways, snaking through the courtyard. In the center of the crowd stands Orit of the Sand Scene, the way walking instructor with the boxy ears. Oh, they're adorable! I love them already. I actually kind of want that outfit. I sit down in an empty spot and wait for them to begin. Luckily I brought a jacket to sit on, otherwise the morning dew would have soaked through my shorts. Aswar, young people. Welcome to the Waywalking Instruction. But before we begin, let us all introduce ourselves. I am Auret of the Sand Scene. I use they them for my pronouns. Please respect this, as you would respectfully address an honored family member with dignity. I love that. I kinda wanna use that for introductions, like I am Kaiju. I use they them pronouns. Please respect this, as you would respectfully address an honored family member with dignity. Or just These are my pronouns. Deal with it. As you may have heard, I am a nomad. This music is pretty boppin' actually. I am a nomad. Nomads are non-human beings who travel nomadically across universes with various clans. Hey Urban! How you doing? Have you have you recovered from the, the massive Japanese food intake from last night? We went to an all-you-can-eat Japanese place for my birthday last night and... Oh, we ate everything. We had... I think we had almost everything on the menu. But they gift soon. Um, at least an English translation. Called such because we thrive in desert environs. Virtually no one knows as much of waywalking as nomads, traveling constantly as we do. Yeah, I slept. Yeah, I managed to sleep good too. God, we gotta do that again. That was just so good. Virtually no one knows as much about waywalking as nomads, traveling constantly as we do. If you haven't already heard it defined, waywalking is a term used to mean traveling through doorways, also known as portals, wormholes, or cracks in the universe, either within the same verse or across verses, though it is used more often to refer to cross-versal travel. <laughs> We're gonna go to travel other places. Oh, so it's not a sport. There are some giggles from the class. Oh no, did I just say that out loud? Some do treat that way walking as an enjoyable pastime, so I suppose somewhat like a sport. Anyway, let us go around the class and introduce ourselves. Please state your names, pronouns, where you are from, and an interesting fact about you. It is not necessary to tell us about your abilities. Here at Raven Rock, that is something you were entitled to keep to yourself, aside from during ability instruction. One by one, people give their names and pronouns and facts. A lot of them talk about their powers anyway. They all blur together until Kimri speaks up. I didn't even notice she was there in the crowd of people. Hiya, I'm Kimri. My pronouns in English are she, her. I'm from the Silver City and Candelinga. One interesting fact about me is that one time I got a tail transmutation on a dare and had to keep it for a month. It's not what, I'm not what you consider a furry, but I actually sort of liked it. It was soft and fluffy like a long-haired cat's tail, but hot pink. Fucking win? <laughs> and you didn't keep it? Next it's my turn. Hi, I'm Kaiju. My pronouns are she, her. That's not the case, but whatever. We're doing this as a character. I'm from Pennsylvania and the suburbs outside of Pennsylvania. I wasn't thinking about my fact while listening to the other people speak, so I still have to come up with something. What should I say? Let's tell an embarrassing story. I want to find out more about the character we're playing. Yeah? Big yawn? Big yawn? Bah. 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 Aw, yeah. Hugs' birthday gift are always welcome. Thank you. Embarrassing story. Hey, bye. Oh, thank you for tea. You should pet your baby. Hi, everyone. This is Bot, everyone. Say hi to Bot. They are awesome. Hey, look! 
Non-binary representation! Yay! Okay. <laughs> she loves the scooch. Yeah, Millie, Millie loves the scooch. Thank you for the tea. Should I bring asterisks? Sure, bring asterisks. So I guess I'll tell you a story from my fact. My most embarrassing moment is when I went on a school trip last year. We had went to a theme park I'd never been on a roller coaster before. I was really scared, but one of my teachers convinced me it'd be fine. I sat next to her on the coaster and ended up throwing up on her just as the ride started. She had to ride the whole thing with my puke on her shirt. Can we clap some whistles I finished making video feel spontaneously happy? Oh, we got nastics! It's the big boy. What? Big boy? <gasps> we got an Asterix and we got a Camilla. What? Look at this teddy bear. Look at this freaking teddy bear. What? Yeah. Look at this big boy. I'm not look. <laughs> Bye, Bella! <laughs> So Camilla has this thing where she just kind of rolls when she gets up, and she's just rolled off the cabinet. It's okay, buddy. Oh, you can have him back. All right, kitty co-star gone. Sorry, Billy. <laughs> you tried. You tried. That's what matters. <laughs> A few more people finish up their introductions as we move on. It's great to know, get to know all of you. Now let's talk a little about what makes it possible for partials to walk away. Way walk. Way walk away. Way walk away. Normal humans cannot traverse some types of doorways, including most natural ones and those that lead to other verses. What makes partials different is that their souls are part asim. Which you'll learn more about in your other classes. Mixed souls are somewhat unfolded, allowing you to access doorways that go in other dimensional directions, which in the case, most cross-versal portals. The higher percentage ASIN you are, the easier it is to sense and pass through doorways. And doorways are actually quite common. You have a natural instinct to avoid that which you do not understand, so it is likely you've never passed through one. But in this class, we'll learn how to confront them and override our instincts. For nomads, things work a little differently. We experience the opposite of this instinct and instead are drawn to doorways and exploration. We also have what is known as a pathfinder sense that allows us to navigate the interconnected web of verses that makes up the multiverse. I would play that game. Like, I, I would so happily play a game where you get to play as one of these nomads and just go through different doorways between dimensions. Like, let's play sliders here and see what happens. What would it be like the Long Earth? I don't know. For those of us who are not nomads, there are silvers. A there are devi a device that can not only project holograms in force field, connect to off-world networks and do minor transmutation, but can also help you navigate the multiverse. They don't have access to data about all the all doorways and connected verses, but all the nearby verses are pres pretty well documented, and silvers can be used to get readings on uncharted doorways and verses. Now we won't be doing any way walking today, but to end the class, I'd like to show you the way walk, the walkway, Raven walk. Ah. Walk talking today is difficult apparently, and I am playing visual novels. Let's have some tea. And try this again. I'd like to show you the walkway. Raven Rock Academy's Hall of Artificial Doorways. Stand up now, class. It's only a short walk from here. I get up with the rest of the class and we walk into the zigzagging building to the west. Ooh, this is pretty. This is the walkway. From here you can reach many major Earth and off-world cities, as well as many of the verses we have closer ties with. Feel free to look around for a few minutes, but don't walk through any doorways yet. We'll save that for another class. I walk up and down the doorway, 
At first I can't see the doors, but gradually my senses become more aware that something is there. The doorways aren't actual doors, but they are wormholes placed along the wall both walls of the long hallway. Signs mark where each leads to. Every now and then someone comes through a doorway, which is a bit of a shock to see. Now that class is over, if you do not yet have a silver, please come and get one from the summer session counsellors. You must wear your silver to continue with these classes, while what you do over the course of the class is not dangerous. We want to instill in you some good habits. I like that. With that, I turn around and notice the two counsellors I met when I got to Ravenrock. Eileen and Jay are there at the start of the hallway, holding boxes. Eileen is glowing softly in dim light. You decide to approach her. Hi, Kaiju. How are you doing? I'm starting to feel a little more grounded here. Now that I'm taking classes, more things are making sense now. That's great. Do you need a silver? Yeah, I can't wait to try this out. You take a silver out of the box. It's like a bracelet, and slip, slip it snugly onto my arm. Well, I guess it's a little more portable than, um... What are the the stepping devices in the Long Earth? If anyone has, if anyone's read it before, um, hasn't read it, there's a series of books by Terry Pratchett, Dale Terry, um, and Stephen Baxter, I believe it is, called the Long Earth series, and it's all about like multi-dimensional and like stepping across worlds, and it is like one of my favorite series and the stepping devices are these things that are essentially run by a potato they're powered by a potato and they allow you to step between worlds but a bracelet is pretty good too like i'll take what i can get i hope you have a great day you too i walk out of the walkway building and head towards the dining hall My morning activities used up a lot of energy and I already missed breakfast, so I can't get to lunch fast enough. I'm feeling up to it today, so I stand in line for some candlingan food. Nailed it. It appears very purple. Lots of mushrooms. After getting my food, I head over to Boo and Meha's table. Hi Kaiju, did you enjoy your first day of classes? Well, we only have morning classes. Yeah, I finally found out what waywalking is. I thought it was a sport until today. Really? May I shorts a glass? Shoots a glass. No offense intended, of course. No offense taken. So what did you do today, Boo? Boo gets super excited. I attended the version of intercultural studies for off-worlders and asked a lot of questions. See, learning about other cultures has always been important to me. It's a special interest in mine because I'm what Earthies call autistic. Oh, you got, you got some autistic representation too, that's awesome. My brain runs on a different operating system, so even learning about pre songs culture when I was growing up on Earth felt like a foreign culture, and language the old-fashioned way. That's a really good way to describe it, actually. Like you're running on a different operating system. Like, it can be similar, but it's not the same. Really? Come here, baby. You want a hairbrush? You like hairbrushes, they're tasty. Come on. Yeah. Oh, bye bye. You gotta get so yeah, oh god, it suddenly started getting very wet. <laughs> Good luck! Oh and look at this. Huh? Are you hungry? Are you angry? Sorry? No, of course not. Did you see how my buttons changed? They're connected to my thoughts and help other people, autistic and otherwise, understand my emotions. Sometimes they even help me understand my own emotions when I'm having trouble naming them. I... Oh really, maybe it's autistic as well. I love the buttons idea. That's such an awesome idea. Is the apocalypse out there? Yeah, I don't go there. Oh, yeah. Uh, Melbourne, where I am, has suddenly turned apocalyptic. We went from a really hot day, uh, to, uh, Wizard of Oz is the closest I can, I can describe it as. That's really cool. Come to think of it, I did see your buttons change before, but I didn't think too closely about it. Lunatech is so awesome. And you, Mayor? What did you do today so far? 
Oh, I just went to an ability class for people with super senses. Nothing too new to me yet. After that, we focus more on our food. Turns out the candling and mushrooms dish is actually really good. When dinner is over, I head back to my room. I decide to check out the school's greenhouse on a whim. When I get there, I see a girl with green skin and white hair standing there with her eyes closed. And really pretty too. Hi there, my name's Kaiju. What's yours? Oh, I didn't hear you come in. I'm Cade. I'd say that's Cade. I've never been to a greenhouse before. Can you tell me about it? I actually spend a lot of time here. The plants are really nice. I see a distant look in Cade's eyes. I'm not a big plant person, but I heard they grow some strange stuff in here for the dining halls. Yes, that's true. I can't eat most of the dining hall food, but some of the plants here are fine. It's just a really nice place to relax, away from all the people. Mood. Am I bothering you? Oh no, I'm fine interacting one-on-one, -on -one, but multiple people is a bit too much for me. Yeah. This is actually one reason why I stream, because I'm like, okay, like, one-on-one, -on -one, I'm good. As soon as I'm in a group, I fall apart, but here I can interact with you all one-on-one, -on -one, and it's... This is why I'm a proponent for streamers, because, especially in small streams like this, I get to say, Hi Draz, hi Urban, hi Onyx, just hi, and talk to you one-on-one, -on -one as well as doing a group thing, and it's lovely. I hope that's not rude to ask, but I've been asking almost everyone I'm here, everyone I meet. Oh, the sec. Yeah. What? You good? Yeah. What? That's my cushion. <laughs> oh, I, I hear a, I hear a sister. Hey, Evan. Hello. Happy, happy. Thank you. Love oh. you. Love you. Bye stream. Bye stream. Bye stream. Bye stream. This is Evan. <laughs> Go, go follow um, Urban Neurosis. <laughs> I'm going to continue with my day. Okay. The, Have a good day. The thing. But oh ah. boy, is it wet. You're, you're damp. Go, yes. go, go get undamped. Enjoy your shinies. I have. I got a shiny. You want to go on a red No, no, it's alright. I got a shiny. I got a new keyboard <laughs> because my cats destroyed my keyboard and a mouse and programmable colors. And I got to do like trans pride or. Non-binary pride or fucking ace pride. I don't know if I can do that, but we'll see what we can do. Um, pride. Just pride. You're going to do some fucking pride keyboards. <laughs> random. Random but awesome. Oh, I would have thought it was obvious what I am. I'm pretty new to the non-community. I couldn't tell if you were being mean or not, but I guess you're just genuinely curious. I'm a half-nymph. I can manipulate water and do some illusions. But being what I am also comes with impairment. I'd rather not talk about more than that. Fair enough. Okay, that's fine. Millie! Come here, baby. Come here. Come here. Ugh. Come in, you shorty. Come in, shorty. Okay, that's fine. I wouldn't want to make you uncomfortable. It's been nice meeting you, but I have to go now. Maybe we'll see each other again sometime soon. Do you, do you want to go back on your bed? Do you want to go back to the bed? What's up with you? It's okay. It's okay. I hope so. Yeah, she's a year old, and she's, but, and she's so much bigger than she used to be. She used to be, like, that big. And now she's gotten so much bigger, but she's still so tiny. Oh, ragamuffin. Alright, you wanna go back on your spot? Yeah. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Come on. Come on. What? There you go. What? There we go. Also, yeah. Uh, also, those. Folks, go and throw uh, Urban Neurosis a follow. Um, she is my sister and she is amazing and she has a very positive and wonderful community as well. Um, and yeah, such damp. Yes, it's very damp out there. My train died. 
Nope. Millie's gone. Okay. With that, Kay walks away. There's something unsteady and slow about the way she walks. I decide it's time to have dinner. Happy, happy. Thank you. Thank you for my present. At dinner, I sit with Boo and Pear again, but nothing of note happens. We're pretty much just hungry. As I'm walking to through the hallway towards my room, thinking about bed, I actually bump into a girl walking by. Oh, sorry about that. I wasn't watching where I was going. The girl's glowing. I hope I haven't started an altercation. Oh, is this like a Pokemon battle now? No problem. It didn't hurt me. I was off on my own imagination too. Otherwise, I would have been walking. What do you mean by that? I'm, I'm a former half. I, if I really need to get somewhere quick, I can just poof myself there almost instantly. A former half? As in former half human? I'd heard about them. They were born half human, half energy being, and later lost either their humidity, huma humidity, <laughs> humanity, or their energy being side. Since she obviously has some sort of power, that means she's a powerful immortal. Oh wow. That's how it goes. Most people don't know how to respond to that. I still don't know how to respond to it. <laughs> well, you're in the right place then. Yeah, I guess. I'm hoping that I can make some friends while I'm here with similar experiences. I'm not a former half, but I'm new to the non-world too. My name's Kaiju. Well, it's been nice to meet you. I'm Ada, or Ada. I hope to see you again sometime soon. Ada disappears and I head back to my room. I'm exhausted by the time I get back to my room. Kimri is sitting on her bed already, scrolling through a holographic screen surrounding her face. I let her be and climb into bed. Good night, Raven Rock. I'm already starting to get used to it here. Aww. Hey Draz, how long is your game? Just curious, because it's probably going to be a relatively short stream today. Um, depending on how I feel. Yours is very short. Okay, we'll do another couple of days here and we'll see how we go. I open my eyes and get up feeling refreshed. Kim, Rhea, Lizzie is still sleeping. I look over at the clock on my side table, still pretty early. There's time to eat breakfast, but I decide against it. I know a bit about a big fan of breakfast mood. Despite it supposedly being the most important meal of the day, with funny rabbit ears, instead I sit at my desk and read a book for a while. What the frack? Hey, Kim reuses my exclamations too. I must still be dreaming, or is this a real paper book? Yes, as a matter of fact it is. We Earthies like the smell and tactile sensations of reading a real book. Oh, okay. Enough Earthy bashing, I get it. It's almost time to go to class. What should I do? Ooh, what are we doing? What do we want to do? I will let you folks pick what we do next. Well, I open my present. What are we going to do? Present, present, present. Abilities? Abilities sound good? Alright. Let's learn about shape-shifting. I decide to attend ability class today. I'm just too dang excited about learning to use my powers to choose anything else. Also, I want to meet the other teachers. Oh, I'm gonna need my special knife this one. Wow. 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 Yes, I'm excited. I like opening presents, even if I know what they are. I walk into the classroom expecting something bigger, an arena or something, but instead it's just a normal classroom. A fancy normal classroom. But there are still desks. I think I've seen this same background shot used. Before, I have played a lot of visual novels and I think I recognize this one. <laughs> this is a great, one of the great things about visual novels. You, you can you can take graphics packages from all different things and just mix them together into whatever you need because this is something you don't need, something amazingly like uh, specialized for, for some sort of, some of these pages. There are already other students in the room, either sitting quietly or chatting with each other. 
First bedroom background was also used when Aster falls. Yeah, right? Like, and that's the thing. You've got, you've got packages. You can, you can go on itch. Like, this is me touting for itch.io again, because I love it. And that's where most of these games are. Like, almost every queer game I know is exclusively on itch. Because anywhere else is too difficult, or too rough, or has no kind of moderation. Um, Steam is trying a little better, but itch is where you go. Um, and there are places where you can just get packages. You can get um, background packages, and character sprites, and music, um, and uh, UI scripting. And people want to share this, and it's so good, I want to see it more. What's up, Raiden? Come here, buddy. Come here. Oh, we got what? We got my boy. We got my boy. We got a Raiden. This is my big boy. He's... Four? Five? How old are you now? How old are you? Old enough. Old enough, aren't you? Yeah, you're a good boy. You wanna go up? Ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. Bye. <sighs> and now everything is all over the place. Thank you, Ryden. I sit down at an empty desk, and seconds later, the professor who gave the talk in the atrium appears at the front of the room. Some students gasp. There is a slight flicker to her image at first, letting on that she's a hologram and not a teleporter. Although I suppose she could still be a teleporter. Welcome to your first ability class, students. As you know, I'm Professor Black. I suspect you may be wondering why you are sitting in a classroom and not putting your powers into practice. There are some nods around the classroom. Well, however much you desire to begin beating each other up in the ability center, we at Ravenrock believe it is important to in inculcate our student body with a healthy respect for and understanding of our abilities and those of others. That means you'll have to sit through some lectures. Yay! This is a this is ability instructions and management. Not only will you learn to use your own abilities, you will learn about abilities and how they work. And of course, eventually you get the chance to beat each other up in the ability center. Consensually. <laughs> I love that addendum! <laughs> You'll be able to beat each other up consensually. That's the important part. You don't shame here, as long as it's consensual. Some cheers go up around the room. Professor Black looks at each of the cheers individually, but I don't understand how she could possibly do so as a hologram. To begin with, T. And then, I'll give a proper overview of the most common types of non-humans. As you've heard this before, please be patient for the students who have not heard it. To properly understand our community, you must first understand Aeson. Aeson are beings made of A, or soul energy as often called, who can alter matter at the molecular level, perceive the world on a level that humans cannot, and exist outside of a body indefinitely. Can, can I be an Aeson, please? Collectively, the Aeson of a planet form its consciousness and core. Individual Aeson are often considered aspects of a planet's soul. This is really deep lore. I'm liking this. Aeson come in different varieties, as they can create groups of similar individuals over time, and members influence the development of their groups of similarly featured Aeson. Most mythological beings find their inspiration from different groups of Aeson. Angels, demons, merfolk, fey, and more. There are far more to Aeson than what I can tell you in this first lecture, but continue attending this class and you will learn more. What is important to realize is that realize next is that all sentient beings have a core of A or soul that forms their essential self. We mean some demons, please. I like demons. Demons are cool. The A of humans is very different from that of Aeson, which but when Aeson and human form and humans have a child together. The child generally has a mixed core. This mixed cause is an effect generally described using what is called a pape flower analogy. 
The paper flower analogy asks you to consider your A cord of your paper flower tightly folded such that you cannot see what it is inside. That is comparable to the core of an average human without abilities. Their souls are folded. Then consider what happens if the paper flower is placed in water, which represents more fluid and connected souls of Aeson. It unfolds. This is a visualization of what happens when mixed human ace and child comes into being and what gives them their ability. It's really sweet. That is an utterly beautiful analogy. These abilities may come directly from the fluid part of their core, but also from the unfolded parts of their human side, allowing those of mixed A to have abilities that even ace and do not, such as future saying and even time travel. So far we haven't investigated any kind of criminal activity with regards to this, and I'm, I'm glad we've avoided that for the time being, because I, I can see this going in interesting directions. So far, all of what Professor Black has said sounds vaguely familiar, especially the thing about the paper flower, like something maybe my parents told me when I was a little girl. Such people are actually quite common, and make up the majority of people living outside Earth. Thus, the most common variety of non-human who regularly interacts with our community is what's called a partial. That is, anyone who has had an ASIN somewhere in their ancestry. There is a specific type of ASIN known as a former half that is generally more likely to interact with our community than other ASIN. That is because they are born half human, half ASIN, but lose their human side and become full ASIN. Former halves generally think more like humans and maintain their human mor morality, and are generally not as powerful as other Aeson. They are also those who are born half human and half Aeson who lose their Aeson side, and they generally lose all their abilities and become fully human. Some stay in contact with our community, but many do not. Many do not ever even interact with it at all. The former half phenomenon is what when a child is born from a human Aeson with an unstable A, commonly known as vampires. These beings are not the vampires of myth, but do require the A that clings to the blood of humans in order to maintain their stability over time and avoid being reabsorbed into the all Earth's core of A. This sounds like the best tabletop RPG. Like... I, I need to talk to the person who made this and ask them if they wouldn't mind writing a tabletop game based out of all of this because it's pretty freaking cool. Half vampire children, half half vampire. Oh god. Meta does make change. Nice! So it's possible? Half vampire children are a very unstable mixture. During their youth, they generally can use only passive abilities and only subconsciously. By the age of 20, they generally will have gone through their change. Buddy, you're in my life. Buddy. Boop. Boop. Thank you. Former halves are not nearly as common as partials, but we have many here among the student body. I noticed that people in the room are looking pointedly at a girl in the corner of the room who has begun to glow. She looks rather uncomfortable at being put on the spot. She must be a former half. It is sometimes possible for humans to become partials, or partials become more ASIN through a process known as gifting. Performed by most ASIN, this process is permanent, but if done by a vampire, it is only temporary, and quite often addictive. I would advise you against seeking out permanent gifting, for reasons I will go into further detail in the future. But let me say now that not all ASIN have your best interests at heart, and may ask for much in return for such a favour. Ooh. Professor Black pauses for effect. She stays quiet long enough for us to squirm in our seats, looking at each other, each one of us in turn, then she moves on. Other types of non-humans in our communities are generally humanoid species from other universes, such as the Talmones and Nomads. We will learn more about the way there are abilities than different ways and in a later class. Before you leave, I'd like to give you a rundown of the system by which abilities are classed at Raven Rock and many other parts of the community. Abilities draw classes are drawn up based on the percentage of your core in that ASIN. 
Class A is greater than 0%, up to 5%. Class B is 6 to 10. C1 is 11 to 20. C... C1 is 11 to 20. C1 is 11, 21 to 30. I'm guessing that should be C2. Class D1 is 31 to 40%. D2 is 41 to 50, etc, etc, etc. And F2 is everything just below that. Just below 100%. These classes only apply to partials, and different systems are used for other non-humans. Here we refer to them as belonging to special classes. And last but not least, I must go over the rules here at Raven Rock regarding power usage and protection. A few people in the room groan. Professor Black looks at them sharply. While you ha are under protection and grounds of Raven Rock Academy, you may only use your abilities on those who have consented to such use. I must not attempt to use them to willfully damage school properties. Yes, we have ways of fixing things, but this is about setting a good example. Don't break shit and don't mess with other people who haven't said yes, please. Lastly, if you have an ability that is potentially dangerous to yourself and others, you must use the proper protection and equipment to ensure safety. Those of you who do not yet issued a silver, please come to the front of the room and get one from a counsellor. Now thank you for your time, and I hope you have a wonderful summer session together. I promise you that next class you will actually be able to use your abilities. Professor Black's hologram disappears. I notice that two glowing counsellors, Jason and Orion, who are likely former halves, have appeared in the front of the room in some brown, with some brown cardboard boxes in their hands. I already have a silver to use for protection, so I leave the class and go to lunch. Renpai, if, duh, then duh. I love this. So this thing, if, so, for folks who haven't, building a game in Renpai, a very simple game, is very easy. Like, the, it is one of the I think it is the best way to learn scripting, personally, because I played with a bunch of different things, and RemPy is an amazingly simple system to learn, and you can make anything. If you poke around with it long enough, you will be able to make anything you want. And if you start to play around with it, you start learning how other people have made things, and that is a beautiful way to learn... Um, to learn how to make things yourself, to learn how to uh, how to create, how to develop, and then you can look at it and go, they did this, how can I do this? Um, yeah, and because it's Python, you can technically do anything you can do with Python in RemPy. Um, so you bring up some a system like Atom, which is an app that you can use, and you can just scratch it. You can go, this is this character, this is this is how this script works, this is how it shows things up, and your menu options, and, like, I really want to get, um, something that I'd love to do in the future, is get someone on a digital diversity stream, possibly Draz, if they'd be up for it, to make something. To make something simple and quick in a stream. Just sit down here on camera and make a game. Doesn't have to be a big one. Yeah, digital diversity jam. Let's have a digital diversity jam. Let's just get everyone, let's just get someone to sit down and show people how to make something. The simplest thing you can. And then show people how to tweak it so it's more and more. What do you think, Draz? Is that something we could do? So I think that's something we could do. Um, and I'm pretty sure there are a few people out there who'd like to learn that as well. Like these are these are not complicated skills to learn, but as I've said previously in, in our streams, we had 500 games made. Uh, put up on itch in the last year 500 like if we go down to, to visual uh, we go into itch and you just search for visual novel 
Itch has nearly 6,000 visual novels right now. 6,000. Because that's how simple a system it is to learn. Tangent, I know, but this is something that I'm thinking about for later on down the track, and I would actually be curious about what people think of that. If they'd like to see that, um, if it's something they'd like to learn, um, I am I am a hundred on board because I want people to be able to make things like this. I want people to know how simple it is to tell a story, and then you get to build it. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. That was a very big tangent. I apologize. Lunch was uneventful. I decided to take a walk by the sports field when I run into a tall girl with silver skin. Hi, what's your name? What? Is this Earthy trying to speak with me? I'm just trying to be friendly. Yeah, right. Human. Hey, we're all nuns here. I'm not just human. But you're still at least some human. I'm not. I'm Talmo. Therefore, we have nothing to talk about. Oh, I want to kick you in the shin. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure we have at least one thing in common. I mean, we're both here to learn our about, about our abilities. I seriously doubt we're on the same level. I'll prove you wrong. Whatever it is you think about us humans. I use my shape-shifting to give me strength and a boost to give her a push. She stumbles and falls to her knees. Well, I guess you're not terrible. You've earned at least my name. You may address me as Ada Ren and Svada, daughter reigning of Ada Hinda and Svada Tan, Filal to the 115th Order, inheritor of the wind. Go learn what that name means. Means I'm going to kick you in the shins. With that, the girl walks away quickly. <laughs> hey, hell! That was an attraction. At dinner, Meha and Boo get into an argument over whether non-abilities count as magic or not. It's ridiculous. Our abilities aren't magic. There's a scientific explanation as to how they work. Basic aeology. I think it's all in semantics. They allow us to do things above what is considered natural calling on something bigger than ourselves. So I think they count as magic. It's all about how you define magic. Not uh Magic is an established definition, at least where I grew up. It's any supernatural, unexplained force that can be theoretically be harnessed by beings to cause external changes in the world. Since all non-abilities are explained, magic doesn't exist. And what even is supernatural? If it's in the world, doesn't that make it natural? <laughs> That's a good explanation, actually. I'm, I'm in favor of that. Like, if it's in the world, then it's natural. Deal with it. Maybe where you're from, it has that definition. But here on Earth, things are a little more fuzzy. Different people have different conceptions of natural and supernatural. So to some people, abilities are magic, and to some they are not. To me, they're magic. Look at that! <laughs> Look at the badge, it's just like, I am not happy with this. Sure, some people have opinions, but that doesn't make them all right. I don't think abilities can be magic and not magic at the same time. That's a contradiction. Uh, okay, Kaiju, how about you weigh in on this issue? Uh. What do folks think? Are abilities magic or not magic? Who, who thinks that there is a definite a definite supernatural concept or who thinks that and and who thinks that it's purely scientific and provable this is actually a curious one this is a, always an interesting one when it comes to this sort of stuff I mean I'm leaning towards them both being right because our definitions are still very fuzzy, and they would be very fuzzy even in this kind of place. I think I'd, I'd more lean towards them both being right. I think you each have a point. Sitting on the fence. 
That's just what I was trying to get across. We all have different viewpoints that can all be internally consistent. Boo pouts. I think that's just a cop out. Kai just trying to avoid answering the question. <laughs> I mean, eh? Yeah, in a way. Hey, I really do agree with both of you. Cognitive dissonance, then. Meha rolls her eyes. After that, I change the subject. Some things are difficult to discuss with people, and some people have views that make it difficult to discuss with them, and that's all valid. After a long day, it's time to go to bed, or oh, well, I should go to bed, but instead I decide to spend more time reading. Kimri is already asleep, and Lizzie hasn't gotten back to the room for the night, so all is quiet. I read for about an hour, then Lizzie finally gets back. Wow, you were out pretty late. Yeah, well, I got into an interesting conversation and lost track of time. At least all you're missing out on is sleep. Could have been much worse. Yeah, I know. Lizzie sits down on her bed and pulls out a bag of yarn and begins to knit. I haven't finished my bed, but my book, but the sound of clicking needles lulls me to sleepiness. I fall asleep within a few minutes. I think that's where we'll call it on this game today. So we're going to save it. Whoop. And we're going to switch over to boop. And we're going to move on to our second game of the day. Uh, so we're going to move on to a game by our very own Brazilian. And let's clear all that. Yes, I will click. All right. The second game we are playing today is called Who Knows Where They're Going. Um, this is one that I've been curious about since Drez told me, and I'm really curious about it. And I'm going to have to play it in a slightly different way, so we'll see how we go, because this is interactive novel, so things are going to be slightly different. Yeah, it's you! I always love your games. Your games are wonderful. Um, let me just get up a little bit of a link here. Whoop. That one, please. Yoink. All right. Let's switch over to our game. I don't believe there are... Okay, so... Content warnings. This game contain, contain, yeah, this game explores themes ranging from familial expectations to fat phobia to ace and arrow identities. Just so you know what's going on. <laughs> Whoop. And we're going to go to this. And I think I can go to that. And turn off that one. There we go. Each games are always interesting to stream because you never know quite how they're going to represent, how they're going to display. Um, so streaming them is always a lot of fun because it's like, oh, this one shows up as a window. This one shows up as a specific kind of game. This one you have to play through a browser. This one is essentially a browser-based game. Um, so that's how we play it. And yeah, I'm all right. I love Drazzy's games. Um, Brazilian does some absolutely amazing work, especially discussing things like asexuality and a romance uh, situations, and I'm really keen for this one. So let's find out who knows where they are going. Can I zoom in or no? There we go. Things are going to be a little difficult to read, possibly, but we'll see how we go. I may need to run this in the browser. I'll figure it out. You let me know what you think. When you reach the park, she's already there, which doesn't surprise you. Ever since Rel's been working at the Roasted Lily Cafe, she's been there waiting before you have. Been there before you have. Still, what if she's been waiting here for an hour or something? What if she doesn't want to have a date anymore? Oh god, you spent so long working up the courage to... Breathe, Vera. Smile and walk over to her. Ray looks up as soon as you approach and gives you a smile. Yeah, I think I might run this one through browser, so give me a moment to change the setup. I didn't do a big test of this before. 
I just wanted to know that it works, and it does. That's always lovely. Uh, so you made this one for Eurojam dress? Was that it? That one. There we go. There we go. Make big. Make big. Okay. We'll just play through that. It'll do. It'll do. I'm gonna do what I can. Back to game. There we go. Now we can read it a little better. Both of the games on the stream were Yuri Jam 2017. Okay. So there's Draz's stuff. Thanks. Alright, I uh, yes. Um there is also, for those who want to check it out, uh, I have actually got a list of all the games that I am streaming on the Digital Diversity channel, as well as any game that I can't stream for whatever reason, but I do love or want to share. Um, feel free to go check it out. Um, and yeah, or get in contact with me and, let, and I'll let you know. If you are looking for cool games you want to play and you want to check out, let me know and I will send you some because they're pretty awesome. Well, go shoot, breathe. Okay, there we go. Rel looks up as soon as you approach and gives you a smile. Hey Vera, she says softly, somewhat awkwardly standing up from the bench. Your eyes move to her outfit. She's wearing a purple and magenta top with puffy sleeves paired with black pants. Her blue lipstick matches the color of her dyed tips. Simple yet classy without being too formal. I love your outfit, you say. Rel smiles at you even more. Thank you. I wasn't sure what too sure what to wear. I don't really do dates, she admits sheepishly. And even so, she chose to go on a date with you. Aww. So what did you want to do? Rel asks. Hmm. There's a lake nearby. Want to skip stones? You suggest. That's how I expected the sentence to end, Rel says, amused. What did you expect me to say, you ask? Did you do something wrong? I thought you'd say, do you want to feed the ducks, or something like that, she explains. Feeding ducks bread is actually bad for them. Ah, uh, don't worry about that. Skipping stones sounds great. You smile at her ramblings. I'll lead the way, you say, starting to walk along the path. Rel smiles, moving after you. As you wish. The two of you reach the lake soon after and sit down at its edge. You've done this before then, she asks, as you look around this for a suitable rock. I haven't done this for a while, but I liked to do it when I was a kid. Well nods. Mm. I've always found skipping rocks relaxing without feeling like I'm wasting my time, you confess, as you make the first throw. How so? Rel looks intrigued. Well, you can't just toss a stone and expect it to skip across the water. It takes practice, you explain. But but you still throw rocks at a lake. She nods, staring out onto the lake. The stone makes two skips before sinking to the bottom. You can't help but continue. I feel guilty that I'm not doing anything productive, so skipping stones tricks myself into thinking I am. That's really sweet. Did you want to skip stones too, you ask? Rel shakes her head. No. If it's calming for you to do, it's calming for me to watch, honestly. Fair enough. You locate another rock and send it skimming across the water. This time it skips three times. You've improved, she says, smiling. Thank you. Thank you. You bow. She laughs and applauds. Want to get lunch? The cafe near the park is a bit bigger than the cafe you two work at. It seems that everyone else has decided to have lunch. Wait stuff bustle around, carrying food and drinks and taking orders. You manage to find a table near the window. It's weird, isn't it? Waiting to be served. Yeah, you agree. I'm waiting for Chris to appear any moment now. Telling us to get back to work. You share a smile, knowing full well that your jabs at your management are all in good fun. A waitress comes over to the table and asks for your orders. Flat white ha and ham and cheese croissant, please. 
the table the waitress turning to you as you order it all. Can I please have a mocha and a slice of tiramisu? Once the waitress leaves, you suddenly remember that this is a date. Damn, you're doing so well. Mm. I've been wondering, when did you get your hair dyed? I didn't think your parents would approve, you say. Rel laughs. Yeah, they don't. Threatened to cut my hair more than once. Never go through with it, of course. They're bad, bad, but not that bad. Realizing that she never answered your question, she hastily continues. I got my hair dyed shortly after being accepted into my law degree. Sounds like a good reason. Belated teenage rebellion, you ask jokingly? She laughs again. You're not far off from the truth. I love these visual, these interactive novels, they're just... Because this is twine-based, isn't it? We can find out all is interactive. Yes, made with twine. And this is another really simple engine you can use. Um, Twine is also really good for storyboarding. If there's a game you want to make and you want to try and work out the pathing of how it's going to go, Twine's a really good way to see that visually. But it, you can also do it um, if you're making um, a movie or a show or something like that. You can use it to storyboard an entire script. And it's pretty awesome like that. Twine 1.4.2. Nice. I was trying Twine and then it's like, uh, I, I need something more visual for me to keep going with it. Planning out current game in Twine before moving into Rempai. Yeah. So you can use one to move into another. Um, and in the end, you can chain engines to find out what you want to make and to work on something incredible. So you could start developing a game in Twine do the basics, um, the basics uh, scenes in Rempai and move that into Unity or move that into Unreal. Like you can just take it step by step like that. And having a basic knowledge in all these engines is actually really useful for that sort of thing. How is that law degree going, you ask curiously? Rel grimaces, well, it's going well enough, it's just not fun. Engaging, but uh... I don't know what else I'd even study, she admits. Like, I'm good at role learning, memorize a chapter and vomit it all out at a test. But I don't, like... But what else is there? Creative stuff, but I'm not like you, I'm not good at that. What, kitty? What do you think? What do you think? Yeah? Yeah? You wanna hang around for a twine? Hang around for a twine. You pause thoughtfully. Take a gap year, you suggest? I feel if I did that, I'd never go back to uni, she admits, before her expression changes. Oh look, food's here. So it is. You thank the waitress as she places down your orders on the table. You take a slow sip of your mocha while Rope grabs her knife and fork. You expect her to dig into her ham and cheese croissant, but she just fidgets with her utensils. Is everything all right, you ask? She looks at it for you. Yeah, everything's fine. Yeah, that's the most blatant lie you've ever heard. You can tell me you know, you assure her. Hesitantly, Rel begins talking. Oh, well, I've enjoyed this date deeply, but, uh, you brace for rejection. There's something I haven't told you yet, she confesses. Well, it can't be that you're gay. I know that already. You can't help but joke. She laughs slightly. Well, it's true that I'm gay, well, bi to be exact, but I'm not sure bi is the right label for me, Rel continues. Maybe pan's a better fit? She shakes her head. No, not like that. I mean, I haven't gone on many dates, and not like a, out, of, out of lack of options, just... She takes a deep breath. Sometimes I wonder... Is it our society that influences people to seek out more dates and partners than they should? Or is it me that fills the odd one out? Fucking mood. <laughs> I need an alert for this sort of stuff. You let the rhetorical question linger before you say your next words. Rel, have you ever considered that you're Demi? Demi pride. 
She pauses and looks at you quizzically. Like, you only develop attraction towards someone after spending time with them. It's on the A spectrum. You hope you explained this right. Yeah, trying to explain Demi right can be really hard. Just, just have to say, like, it, it's, Demi is one of those, um, sexualities where it can feel really tough to explain properly because most cishet people will go, oh no, that's just normal. And because they don't quite get it. It's, it's an awkward one to do. I see. She rests her chin in her hands. After a short silence, she speaks up again. So, uh, I still like being bi. Like, it doesn't fit me perfectly. The genders I'm attracted to are still important to me? You can be demi-bisexual and romantic, you assure her. I'll think it over, she said slowly. But I think I feel, I might feel like I'm making up words for myself, you know, even if that's not true. Words aren't hard, words are hard and aren't always useful, you declare. So all you can hope to find the right words that feel right for you in the moment. Right. Labels can change. This is a really good explanation. I'm loving this. I mean, who knows where they're going in life? The best we can do is make ourselves happiest in the moment. Yeah. She finally digs into her croissant. That tiramisu is looking good too. By the time the two of you leave the cafe, the sky has started to darken. You take one last stroll through the park, roll by your side. Thanks, Vera. That was lovely. It's really nice to have a have a heart to heart with someone you already know. It means you don't have to deal with the basic stuff. And I had a great time too. You walk in blissful silence. So, uh, more dates with you would be nice. She speaks up somewhat awkwardly. You smile at her. More dates with you would also be nice. What a coincidence, she says with a grin. She offers her hand, and you take it. Cake has been your coping skill for the last seven months? That's valid. That's beautiful, Draz. That's... That's beautiful. Like... Yeah. Like... This, this is the kind of rap I like to see. This is, it's positive, and it's beautiful, and it's real. That whole thing felt very real, because I felt very much in Rel's position in the past. Um, I still do sometimes. It can be awkward. Um, especially as a poly person in the trans community, where... There's a lot of polycules going on, and everyone seems to want more. Being Demi can sometimes feel like you're being pushed towards more, even though you feel like you can't handle anything more. It's a fun one. Anyway, we're coming up to... That's our second game for the night. There's one last thing I want to do before we finish up, and that is... I want to check out the Ace Jam submissions from last year, and I want to take you through these, just so you can go and check these things out too, because they're pretty awesome. So, we'll go to this, and we'll go over to my wonderful itch launcher here, and these were the su uh, submissions made last year to Ace Jam, so Ace Jam 2018, and there's a lot going on here. And I definitely recognize a few that I have um, seen in the past and that I've either played on my on my own or have streamed. We've got uh, Acetone up there, which is the prequel for Acetylene, uh, another one of Draz's wonderful games. That one would highly recommend. Uh, Autumn Leaves 2 by Communist Sister down here. That is another one I'd recommend. Um, pretty much anything by Communist System Sister is also really good. Um, they do some really incredible stuff. Uh, focus on trans, focus on relationships. Oh, okay. Aston was actually the first thing Draz made in Rempai. Um, so there's 
a term in visual novels which is called a kinetic novel, which is essentially just the story. You don't make choices, but it is a beautiful way of telling a story at a rate which is easier to digest, I think, which is an easier way to absorb for people who don't like getting info dumped on. Because um, you can save it, you can pause it, you can just wait, you can come back to it, and you don't feel like you've missed anything. And that's something I love about visual novels is that it's like having the book, but it's the book that you can feel more connected with, um, that you can see yourself in more. So what else is here? Uh, two Girls Make a Game. Ah, NPCKC have featured one of their games before. Um, one Night Hot Springs, I believe I featured here a while ago. That's really lovely. Who else? Do I recognize anyone else here? Oh, there's another Meta Paradox game over there. So yeah, these are, I do the, oh, actually I know that one too, I think. Yeah, it's a good example of what you can do when you only know the engine for a short time. And that's the thing, like, games like this, like visual novels like this are a fantastic way of learning how to use the engine. So the best way to learn how to build a game is to make a game. Like, it doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be showy or flashy or make any kind of real impact, but it's something you can make. And generally, when you make it, you start making games that feel true. Like, when you're not trying to make a big thing, you will often make something that feels very true to you. Um, and that's what you gotta do. Doesn't matter if you make a game in Twine, or Rempire, or Unity, or Bitsy, or anything else like that. You make a thing, that's what matters. So yeah, there's definitely some really cool stuff around here. Um, would highly recommend. So if you go to itch.io and look for Ace Jam, or you even just go hashtag Ace Jam in Twitter, you will find... Hello buddy, so I'm gonna say goodbye to people. Uh, you'll find some great things. So, I'm going to call that for the, for the day, because I want to get back to playing Outer Worlds, because I am moderately addicted with that. We're getting kitten overrun at the moment. Um, thank you, everyone, for sharing today with me. It was wonderful to do something for uh, Ace Awareness Week. Remember that Ace people and aromantic people and agender people are all part of the queer spectrum. They are valid, we are all valid, and it's important that we get to talk about these things. So, yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of a different one for uh, digital diversity. Um, next week, if I am able to stream next week, there are some very cool games I am very much looking forward to streaming. Um, and we've got two interviews currently being uh, processed for the Ace Jam. And I will hopefully get to talk to the creator of Raven, uh, Camp Raven Rock. And we'll get to find out more about that. So, until next time. Look after yourselves. Look after each other. Remember that you are not alone. Make games. Play games. Be proud of who you are. Help other people be proud of who they are. And I will see you wonderful folks next time for the Digital Diversity Project. See you, everyone.